Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A4 from 2024 Patna math competition. Find all primes P greater than 5 for which there exists an integer A and an integer R satisfying R between 1 and P minus 1 with the following property. The sequence 1A A squared all the way to A to the power of P minus 1 can be rearranged to form a sequence B0, B1 all the way to B sub P, min P minus 5 such that bn minus bn minus 1 minus r is divisible by p for n between 1 and p minus 5. Okay, so let's first try to understand what this means, this condition that they gave us. So we have bn minus bn minus 1 is congruent to r mod p, so that's what it means, and also this r is not 0. Um, so what does that mean? It means the difference between consecutive terms is a constant, which is all it means is that this is an arithmetic sequence. So B0, B1, B2, all the way to B sub P minus 5 is an arithmetic sequence. And in addition to that, the common difference of R um, is not 0. So you can write, write this down as B0, B0 plus R, B0 plus 2R all the way to B0 plus uh, P minus 5R. So what I do notice is that this sequence has distinct terms. Why? Because if you take B0 plus IR and subtract B0 plus JR, you would get I minus JR. Of course, I is between 0 and P minus 5, which means I minus J in absolute value is less than or equal to p minus 5. So if this were to be divisible by p, that would mean i must be equal to j because he doesn't divide r. So that means this is a sequence of distinct um, integers mod p. Everything I'm going to be doing here is going to be mod p. Now looking at this sequence in the geometric form, we have 1a a squared all the way to a to the power of p minus 5. Well, this is curious. So this is very similar to the form of a primitive root. So what is a primitive root? A primitive root mod p is a number a such that 1a a squared all the way to a to the power of p minus 1 this is exactly all of the remainders from 1 to p minus 1. This is mod p. So this is called the primitive root. This looks like a primitive root, so it's almost a primitive root. So these are all distinct. So now um, I was curious to see if this a must be a primitive root. That might help because it gives us some more information. So if it is not a primitive root, that means after some point, it has to cycle back to 1. So that means a to the power of p minus 5 would have to be 1, or rather a to the power of p minus 4, because we know that's not, um, p, a, to, a to the power of p minus 5 isn't 1, because we just showed that these are all distinct mod p. Or it could be that a to the power of p minus 3 is 1, or, and these are all mod p, or it could be that a to the power of p minus 2 is 1 mod p. But what does that mean? It means, um, since I know that a to the power of p minus 1 is also 1 mod p, so the first one tells us a cubed must be 1 mod p. But if you look at the sequence, the sequence does have a cubed in there, unless p minus 1 is less than 3. So if that is the case, that means p minus 1, p minus 5 must be less than 3, which means p must be 7. So this is the only possibility for here. This gives us, because we know that a to the power of p minus 1 is 1 mod p, that tells us that a squared must be 1 mod p. But we know that 1 a, a squared, etc. are distinct. So this implies that p minus 5 must be less than 2, and that is not possible. And similarly here, a to the power of p minus 1 is 1 mod p implies a must be 1 mod p, and that is obviously not possible.
So the only possibility is p equals 7 at this point. So this is what we showed. So what we showed is that p equals 7 or a is a primitive root. Okay, let's look at p equals uh, 7 and see what happens for p equals 7. If you look at p equals 7, by doing a bit of experiment, you realize that 1, 3, and 3 squared give us an arithmetic sequence. So it's 3 squared is 9, which is 2 mod 7. So that gives us 1, 2, and 3. This is an arithmetic sequence um, mod 7. And of course, the common difference is 1, which is not 0 mod 7. So in fact, p equals 7 is one possible answer. Now, let's assume that p is at least 11. So assume p is at least 11, and a is a primitive root mod uh, p. Okay. Let's go back and see what we got so far. We had a sequence 1a a squared all the way to a to the power of p minus 5, but now we know that we can extend this one a to the power of p minus 4, a to the power of p minus 3, a to the power of p minus 2. Um, this is a geometric sequence and these are all distinct. These are all distinct mod and we also have a, an, an arithmetic sequence that is all distinct. B0, B0 plus R, all the way to B0 plus P e minus 5R. These are all distinct, again, mod P. Now, in fact, the numbers here are all of the numbers from 1 to P minus 1. These are exactly 1, 2, all the way to p minus 1 in some order. It doesn't have to be the same order. Now here, because of the fact that p minus 5 is still less than p minus 1, I can, I can extend this sequence. I can get to b0 minus r, b0 minus 2r, b0 minus 3r, and b0 minus 4r. These are also all distinct because again if you take b0 plus minus uh, or plus ir and subtract b0 plus jr, if p were to divide this that would mean p would have to divide i minus jr and if i and j are between negative 4 and p minus 5 then uh, I minus J is less than or equal to P minus 4, P minus 5 minus J gives us plus 4, so that would be P minus 1. And on the other side, that would be uh, greater than or equal to negative uh, P plus 1. So if P divides this, that would mean uh, I would have to be uh, equal to J. So that's the only way it is possible. So that means we get uh, some other values. Uh, that uh, also are going to give us distinct numbers. Now, consider this sequence that we had initially and this one. These are the exact same thing. So this means these four numbers would have to be these three along with zero. So here is what we got. We got B0 minus 4R, B0 minus 3R, B0 minus 2R, and B0 minus R. This is the same as 0, a to the power of p minus 4, a to the power of p minus 3, a to the power of p minus 2. Now let's for simplicity replace a to the power of p minus 1 by 1. So this gives us 0. a to the power of p minus 1 is 1, so we get a to the power of negative 3. a to the power of p minus 1 is 1, we get a to the power of negative 2 and a to the power of negative 1. And all of that is mod p. So these four numbers are these uh, four numbers right here, which means one of them is zero. So if we take one of them to be zero, what do we get for the other ones? We get, let's just say, um, we're going to start seeing what, which one is zero. So if the first one is zero, the next one would have to be r more than zero. So if the first one is zero, the next one would be zero plus r. The next one would be 2r. The next one would be 3r. But we know that these guys would have to be 0, um, a to the negative 1, a to the negative 2, and a to the negative 3, which means 
these three would have to be a geometric sequence, which means square of one of them has to be product of the square, product of the other two. So it is three possibilities. R squared is 2R times 3R, or 2R squared is R times 3R, or 3R squared is R times 2R. And these are all mod P. So this tells us 1 is 6 mod P, which means 5 is 0 mod P. And that's not going to happen because P is at least 11. This gives us 4 is congruent to 1 mod P, or rather 3 mod P. That's obviously also not valid. And this gives us 9 is 2 mod P. And that is also not valid because, again, remember that P is at least 11. That is the case when the first one is 0. If the second term is 0, we have negative R, R, and then 2R. So that means this set would have to be the set of 0, A to negative 3, A to negative 2, A to negative 1. So this is geometric, therefore these three would have to be geometric, which means one of them squared would have to be the product of the other two. Again, all of that is mod P. So we have three possibilities. 2R squared is R times negative R. The first one tells us 1 is negative 2, which isn't valid mod P, because P is greater than equal to 11. And this one gives us 1 is 2. Again, that doesn't happen. This one tells us uh, 4 is negative 1. Again, that doesn't happen. If the next term is 0, we get negative uh, 2r, negative r, so negative 2r, a negative r, 0, and r. This is 0, a negative 3, a negative 2, a negative 1. So again, we have a very similar process. Negative 2r squared would have to be negative r times r, negative r squared would have to be negative 2r times r, and r squared would have to be negative 2r times r. And none of these are going to give us any solution. This would give us 4 is 1, this would give us 1 is negative 2, and this would give us 1 is negative 2 as well. So none of these give us a solution. And finally, if you look at negative 2r, negative r, negative, uh, I'm sorry, negative 3r, negative 2r, negative r0. This gives us three, three equations that are identical to the very first one that we had. Because if this is geometric, then uh, you would get the exact same equalities we had up there. And that brings me to the end of this video. So I will see you in the next video.